well, be live, so to speak. So I started the recording and we're good to go. So welcome everybody. Uh, as, as folk arrive, um, uh, we will um, take on the introductions and so forth. Um, at, at the OERU, we have a tradition of consulting uh, uh, on our agendas of our international planning meetings. Uh, it, it's part and parcel of our DNA at the OER Foundation. We are distinctively open in everything we do, uh, including the design and development uh, of, uh, of our meetings and all our planning activities. And this is part of that process uh, where we, you know, we have to think about what we're you know, kind of focus the meeting on and then we proceed with drafting the agenda in the wiki and uh, hopefully everything goes according to plan and we have a very productive uh, meeting in Inverness. So I do appreciate your time uh, and helping us think through uh, the agenda for, uh, for the meeting. So what we've done, perhaps I should do this for the benefit of folk uh, who are not familiar with our wiki environment. Let me just do a screen share here. Uh, in theory, that should be coming through for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a homepage of Wiki Educator. Um, there's a, a link right here at the top of the page in the menu here for OERU planning, which takes us through to the main planning portal of the OERU project. So all our activities within the logic model are listed on this page. And there's a lot of stuff and it can be quite confusing. However, uh, for the purposes of today's meeting, um, the agenda discussion link is right here, drafting the OERU 2016 meeting agenda. And if you click on that, uh, you'll get to the agenda for today's discussion. Uh, and so we set, uh, set up the page. I've got a, um, a brief agenda here. Um, I've already discussed the purpose. And I guess now we can just move on to short introductions of uh, the folks sitting around the table. And I guess the easiest way of doing this is if we go in the order of the folk that are on my screen. So I'll just call you out and I see you. Uh, Ken, I think you are first, first on the list. Okay, it must be by order of logging in. Uh, my Thank name is much. Ken. My name is Ken. Uh, I, uh, I serve as um, the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, for Academic Services at USQ um, uh, in beautiful Toowoomba. And I've uh, been involved with OERU for some time. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to the meeting. Uh, we'll be sending a colleague, a good colleague named David Bull, who's been involved with OERU for uh, years as well. Thanks, Ken. I'm, I'm glad you could make it. We appreciate your time. Uh, moving on then, Becca? Yes, hi, I'm Becca. I'm the manager of a group of online learning designers and developers here at Otago Polytechnic in Dunedin, New Zealand. Hi, Becca. Uh, glad you hi, Wayne. <laughs> moving on then, Stephanie? Hi, I'm Stephanie Chu, the um, new Vice Provost Teaching and Learning at Kwantlen Polytechnic University. So I used to um, work at Simon Fraser University where I have to admit that we really w weren't uh, able to move open education very easily. So I was really excited to join in KPU where there's a lot happening and I'll be attending on behalf of our president and uh, provost. Thanks, Steffi, and, and, and glad you could join us. Uh, KPU is doing some very interesting stuff around the open agenda, so it's great to have you on board, yeah. Thank you. And uh, moving on to Cindy, I guess you're in Edmonton, right? No, I live in Athabasca. Oh, okay. Hi, Cindy. So, hi. I am the uh, Vice President of Academic uh, for Athabasca University, um, which is based in Athabasca, but also has um, space in Edmonton and Calgary. Um, I will be at the meeting. Uh, Athabasca is a founding partner of OERU and has been involved uh, through uh, Rory McGrail, who will also be at the meeting. Um, for a good number of years uh, since the beginning, I guess, eh, Wayne? Yeah, very much so. Um, AU has been a founding partner right from the early conception uh, days, and yeah, um, a good, excellent partner to have on board for sure. Thanks. So this is my first uh, OERU meeting I'll, that I'll be at, but I'm looking forward to it and to seeing all of you. Cindy, they come with health warnings. They're addictive. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, moving on then, uh, Steve, uh, New Jersey. I'm... Hi, everyone. Uh, Steve Phillips here from uh, Thomas Edison State University, uh, Assistant Director for our Center for the Assessment of Learning. Um, this will be my first uh, OERU Partners meeting, but I've been involved with OERU for about the last three years now. Thanks, Steve. And, uh, and I believe in, in earlier life, you also were in, involved with the Sailor Foundation? That's right. Um, I started my career working as a, a educational project manager at the Sailor Foundation. Oh, okay. Now at Sailor Academy. Yeah. And to um, my partner, based in Christchurch, Dave. Yes, um, I have fallen rather farther from the tree where uh, from New Jersey, where I grew up. Uh, now living in Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, and working with Wayne at the Open Education Resource Foundation, uh, working with the OERU for the last year or so, um, mostly focusing on technical aspects of our, of our efforts towards the MVP. Yeah, it um, seems like this is a bit of a hostile takeover bit from the Americans. Um, <laughs> I know, I was just <laughs> thinking. <laughs> um, Mark? <laughs> Uh, this was our plan all along. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Also from New Jersey. Uh, so it's good. Some of us are speaking the same language this evening. Um, uh, and I work with uh, Steve at uh, Thomas Edison State University. And uh, as Steve mentioned, we've been um, involved with the OERU for, we're not in the first wave. I think we were in the second wave. Uh, so quite a while. I'm looking forward to, well, I, think I see a lot of folks who I haven't met before. So I'm looking forward to, to getting to know all of you. Oh, there we go. Thanks, then. Um, let me get the screen share going on again, and then we can uh, quickly run through the agenda uh, in terms of what we've got. I, I just wanted to, uh, to mention, uh, in terms of our confirmed participants, uh, we are, in fact, uh, fully booked for the meeting. We've ac we actually a little overbooked uh, um, uh, in negotiating with our, our colleagues at UHI to figure out how we're going to fit everybody in, in the room, but um, that, that's, that's a good sign. In terms of confirmed participants, uh, we have um, the 28 folk who've confirmed uh, for the partners meeting, and we've got 25 seats. So this is going to be interesting, uh, but we'll 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 figure it out. And it's it's a good spread of the network across the continent, so it's uh, it's looking good in terms of the folk who are going to be joining us. Um, we also, I you may or may not be aware, we actually run. Um, a, a, a virtual participation as well, uh, where we have Etherpad documents, where we actually have a dedicated breakout group for the virtual participants as well at the meeting. And the inputs from the virtual participants are also fed into the meeting decision-making process. Uh, and so it makes for an interesting meeting from that perspective as well. So if there are colleagues at your institutions uh, who would still like to engage in the meeting and contribute, uh, they are able to do so. Um, you know, time zone willing, uh, but we, we set up the Etherpad documents so that the contributions can also be asynchronous for the breakout sessions in the meeting. So I just wanted to mention that so that you are aware of that. The uh, a, a, Just a quick review of the MVP action plan. So th this year has been a particularly interesting year in that we focus, we've been focusing on the implementation of what we're calling minimum viable product. And minimum viable product, in short, is sufficient uh, product or courses using the OERU model that would lead to two nominated exit credentials. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to report that we are well on track uh, to achieving the objectives that we set out for the MVP. I, uh, I distributed a, 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 a report which documented our status as of the end, of, well, as of August. Um, there is a link there from the meeting page, you know, and you can go through, you know, the detail. I'm not going to spend too much time on that today. But just really to highlight that we have a sufficient number of courses that will contribute to the certificate of, uh, let me just go back here, but the certificate of general studies at Thompson Rivers University. Of course, with any other institutions that have similar credentials on the table, I mean, that could also be put on the table as an exit award. When we did our, uh, input, eva or our input evaluation, 
uh, survey, we know that at least three quarters of our partners have a certificate of general studies or bachelor of general studies or similar credential on their books. So that's just something to, to think about as, as we're moving forward. And the second exit award will be a certificate in higher education focusing on, on business studies. And we also have sufficient courses on the books that will be completed uh, for the launch of MVP. So that's actually looking good. It's been a very productive year for us from that perspective. Um, so yeah, the two exit awards, here are the courses that are, are currently being assembled. That's all on track. Uh, other components uh, that we've been working on, we did a little bit of capacity development earlier in the year that has been completed. We've been running another prototype. Uh, actually, at the moment, this was a course that was assembled by Targa Polytechnic, uh, Creating Sustainable Futures. The purpose of this prototype was really to focus on two technological aspects that we've introduced. One is the integration of the discourse platform, which is the forums engine we're running to support OERU learners. We needed to test the integration with the live course feed, how we syndicate you know, interactions. And behind the scenes, we've also been automating um, learner instructions using market, marketing automation software. Uh, and we've been testing that to make sure that that's all working. So that's going well. And the other bit of prototyping that's happening here is the integration of open badging for the micro courses that will uh, count towards credit for the final assessment uh, for the transcripted credit. So there's been a bunch of prototyping going on, thinking about how this impacts on institution systems, um, which will feed back into the meeting. Um, we need to uh, complete the plan for the process evaluation study. This is one of the um, decisions we took at the, one of the very early meetings was to implement the SIP, the, the context input process and product evaluation to help guide the development. And we're now moving into the process evaluation study. I'm pleased to confirm that a, a, a very talented researcher uh, based at USQ is going to be helping us out with the process evaluation. Uh, we still need to undertake the due diligence review. Uh, regarding the, the technologies that we use to support learners, our different technologies, we will be developing help tutorials. They will be completed by the end of the year. So that's all good. On the technology platform side, uh, we finalize the pedagogical specifications that we're using for MVP. So the pedagogical model is fixed in terms of the technologies we'll be using because it was important to pin that down. Uh, we are working on implementing a single silon solution for the various technology services we implement. Uh, it's not a trivial challenge, um, but we are making a good progress there and we're optimistic that uh, by the end of the year we should have that all operational. Um, we've implemented this marketing automation software, which we're using both for partner recruitment as well as automating instructions that are going out to learners. The prototype testing has gone well with that. Uh, it's an open source platform. Uh, you may or may not be aware of it. It's an, uh, an incredibly impressive piece of software, I have to say. Um, we still need to uh, design solutions for how we communicate the courses and pathways of learning towards the exit credentials for our learners. And I suspect this is going to be an important item of discussion at the meeting. So we might need to just shift that date a little. We've also started uh, an analytics project. Uh, we have, uh, with support from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, We've engaged, uh, or they've engaged the Lunar Metrics Company to help us out with some uh, metrics, which will, of course, be extremely useful for our uh, process evaluation. Uh, the OERU has a unique uh, challenge around uh, metrics because, given our open nature, um, learning materials should always be accessible without the requirement of having to register a password. Uh, and so you don't have a, you know, a guaranteed learner identity in order to track interactions. So that's an interesting challenge from a technical point of view. And we've got some interesting solutions that we are working with. But we'll go into the detail about that at, uh, at the meeting. 
we've also just completed a a large uh, and a, a marketing initiative to improve communications uh, of the OERU and also our marketing for new partners and prospective learners. There are a range of uh, marketing assets that you you know you can when, when you've got some spare time you know to go and take a look at. Uh, these are all openly licensed. They are available in open file format. So if any of this is useful uh, for your own work in OER, please feel free to adapt and modify. We've done some tweaks on the OERU um, uh, main website. Uh, you know, there are new banners on the site. Uh, we've got lead capture on every one of our pages. Uh, you'll see at the bottom. Um, and this is all linked with the Maltic Automated Marketing. So we can allocate people that sign up and want, you know, want to get information about OBRU to particular segments and that are associated with email campaigns and appropriate marketing assets. Um, we also uh, have, a, have a set of uh, rather good videos, I must, must say, the, the partner uh, or a video that's been designed for learner recruitment it's also been designed in a way that facilitates customization and branding by our individual partner institution. And there are uh, a couple of partners in the network who have actually uh, have commenced with branding for their own purposes at all, for their techniques, but their own branded version. I know that USQ is in the process of thinking of uh, moving that forward. There's another institution that's also doing this. Uh, that's something worth having a look at. Um, we are going to need to think about the, the, the marketing and recruitment of learners, and I think that's going to be an important item for discussion at the meeting. And um, this is relating to the, the tweaks we've got to do on um, the, the MVP on the OERU.org site in order to communicate which institutions are offering assessment services, what prices they're going to be offering them at, how they tie in with the uh, exit credentials that are on the table. So that's work that still needs to be done. So okay, a quick overview of where we are at. Um, let me open the floor to any questions or items of clarification, comments. And one of our uh, traditional principles here at the OERU is silence means a sense. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that you know it's all pretty. The links are there. I, I encourage you if you haven't seen any of, uh, particularly the marketing resources, you know, go and take a look around. I, I think there's some good stuff there. Uh, we were very fortunate to be get get some funding support from Hewlett to be able to commission. Uh, you know, professional uh, uh, copywriters and marketing folk. Uh, it's an area that uh, we don't uh, have strong capacity in, and this has really uh, helped us move forward. Right. So then getting back to the agenda, um, what we'll do now is actually have a, a quick review or rundown of the items or suggestions that have been suggested by folk already to date. Um, we typically have a standard format at the beginning of our meetings and our, our suggestion is if, you know, if it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it. So I think we're going to keep the initial structure and format uh, of the meetings, which is really about the setting the scene. Uh, we take a, a brief look at the OERU, mile, OERU milestones uh, historically because, you know, there are new folk that come to the meetings who haven't listened with us start. And you know, it's just a good, good way of getting folk up to speed in terms of you know where the OERU has come from, and the milestones. Um, and 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 then we uh, go through this process of you know taking stock and determining uh, the meeting priorities, uh, and that also includes. Uh, so we will be looking at a little bit more detail of some of the stuff I've covered now with the the MVP implementation plan. And then we do this critical friend review um, where we actually go and have a look at, you know, what, if, what has the OERU done well this year and where are the areas we can improve. Um, and in the meeting, you know, brainstorms in breakout sessions, what they think the top priorities should be. 
for the meeting and then that helps frame and guide the discussions for the rest of the meeting. What we also do is the, the we have the two-day partners meeting and throughout the meeting we have this running uh, sort of board so to speak of the issues that the meeting suggests should be tabled at the council of CEOs meeting so that process is introduced very early on in the meeting. And then by the second day, the Tuesday afternoon or the Tuesday evening, uh, I then go and collate all the issues that the meeting has put forward for the CEO's meeting. And then that forms the agenda for the CEO's meeting uh, just by way of process there. Um, here are the items that folk have been submitting. Uh, to date, uh, we need to be discussing the process evaluation uh, to help guide, uh, guide that process. Um, so that has been suggested. Um, looking at what we've done and how we're doing the, uh, the learning analytics project. Checking on the status of the accreditation and the credit transfer. Um, as you'll appreciate within the OERU approved guidelines for credit transfer, our partners retain decision-making autonomy over all aspects of assessment and credentialing, but we also need to work through the, you know, the nitty gritties in terms of uh, how the credit transfer process is going to work and the information we communicate through to the learners. Um, there's a proposal for us to think about our, how we our, organi our organizational structures. We have a working group structure. And as the project is maturing, uh, we are quite agile and we adapt our structures as you know, the needs of our collaboration change. And there's a strong sense that we need to have a look at establishing an academic board for the OERU. So that's what that's about. Um, having a look at the marketing and recruitment of learners, the marketing and recruitment of partner institutions, uh, promoting recognition of OERU. We have a bunch, a bunch of resources where um, the network can actually help with promoting the OERU. One of the proposals that people are thinking about is the concept of um, OERU ambassadors and how that might work. So that's a suggestion that's been put forward. Um, this is related to the item of the academic board that's you know, reviewing our operational and organizational structures. Are they still fit for purpose? Do we need to tweak them? Do we need to rationalize them? Do we need to add anything? Uh, at every meeting, we run this evergreen strategic planning process where we adapt and modify and recalibrate our KPIs each year. So that's what this is all about, is determining our strategic priorities for 2017. Also during 2017, we'll, we'll be moving into the planning and consultation for the next three-year strategic plan. So we have a three-year strategic planning cycle and the current plan runs out at the end of 2017. So there will be a consultation process during 2017 for the 2018 to 2020 strategic plan. So we'll need to uh, be you know, having discussions at the meeting around the planning of that consultation. Um, Becca, uh, you, you put forward a point, and I wonder if I sh uh, I'll, I'll ask you to speak to that point, seeing as though that you're here. Yes. Um, it occurred to me, you have, you have some resources up about developing resources for OERU, but I wondered if we could develop those a little bit further so that groups that were developing courses for OERU would um, have a really great idea about how to produce a quality product. I think that's an excellent suggestion, and I, I personally think that's a good item for us to be doing a little bit of planning ar around at the meeting. So thanks for that, Becca. Um, Mark, uh, we're fortunate to have you with us as well. I see you put forward a point around best approaches to assessment and, and credit or certification. Do you would you like to speak to that? Uh, well, uh, I, I was hoping it, it sort of uh, stood for itself, but I thought, if uh, we can have a discussion about uh, what is working well um, for some of the partners or, uh, or what uh, suggestions we might have for one another or, or simply uh, perhaps a discussion about uh, what, how they 
uh, would react to the methods that, that we're using. So for instance, if we've got a method um, for assessing learning from one of the OERU uh, courses, it might be nice to know whether or not others would accept that toward their own credentials or if they would need to see something else. Perhaps we can work to, toward a sort of a, a set of best practices that might serve all of us well. That's yeah. Yeah, I think that's an important and valuable discussion to have uh, at the meeting. And I think this also relates to an item that Erwin submitted. I, I did document the apologies I received earlier on, but um, and Erwin is one of those apologies, but he had put, put in this point around the invigilation and verification of students. And I think that's related to some of your discussion, Mark. And if I'm not mistaken, Thomas Edison State University as well, uh, or uh, make use of uh, U Proctor, and I, I believe Athabasca University has got a pilot running with uh, with U Proctor. Is um, that's and that correct. Might, that might be so, something that we should table at the meeting for, for for folk to have a think about. And it would be good to get feedback from AU and um, TSU on that. Would that, would that make sense? And Cindy, would would you be willing to? Yeah, I'll, I'll check. Um, and find out where we're at with that. I know that we began to roll out the pilot in the spring, but I don't know if we have any results, but I'll check. Okay. Um, and so what I might do is um, offline is, is contact uh, you, Cindy, and, and Mark uh, with an, a friendly invitation if you'd be happy to speak to sort of the U Proctor item as a, you know, as, uh, as, as a short introductory piece. Typically what we have are at the meetings are sort of short sort of introductory sessions in plenary. They tend to be 15, at 15 to 20 minutes at most, and uh, which are seed the ideas for the breakout group discussions. And so I invite folk to give just a five minute sort of teaser or, or um, you know, summary of the experience or where they're at. So I might contact you offline if you're willing to speak to those points. Sure. sure. Uh, Erwin uh, has suggested uh, an item relating to student support during studies. And of course, the OERU model, we, you know, we don't provide tutorial support, um, but there are things we can be doing to make the journey easier uh, for our, our partners without scaling up needs for staffing. Uh, so that's on the agenda. Um, uh, Dave added this point uh, around our technology roadmap. Um, Dave, I'm not sure if you wanted to say anything about that. Sure. I just uh, I think that it might be of interest to a number of our partners to see some of the decisions that we've made in, in putting together our minimum viable platform to support our minimum viable, minimum viable product. Uh, and some of the lessons that we've learned might might be helpful in their organizations as well, institutions as well. And uh, we'd certainly also be interested in getting a, a, a better sense of the, the lay of the land as far as those institutions are go, going and, and the kind of platform and technology decisions they're making because those can have a bearing on things that we choose down the path, down the track to uh, ensure we have maximum compatibility and, and make it possible for us to integrate what we're doing with our partners' uh, infrastructure. Yeah, no, we've <laughs> there are a few valuable lessons we've learned for sure, and um, part of our open model. And in fact, I think uh, an important benefit of membership of our network is you know the sharing of those lessons. Yep. Okay, so I think this is where I can stop the monologue um, and um, you know open the floor. Um, do suggestions are the items we've missed. Um, do you think there are any we should be taking off the list? Um, so let me let me open the floor there. Uh, and your thoughts and thinking, you know, have, have you got the focus of the meeting right? I mean, it's obviously got a strong focus on the launch of the, the MVP. So let me just open the floor there for any comments and feedback. Well, look, it occurred to me that if we're going to be setting up an academic, sorry, I can't, I can't see it closely enough, an academic board, yep, there it is, that perhaps some of these items could be moved to that uh, forum. Yeah, so, so um, I'm, 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 
Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm understanding uh, your suggestion. Typically what we would do is we start drafting uh, drafts in the wiki before the meeting, uh, which will be open. Anybody can contribute to, and that kind of becomes an input into the discussion at the meeting. And so what we would do is we would typically in the sessions structure, you know, three or four breakouts in each session and people then self nominate to, you know, the, the, the subgroup that, that they want to um, participate in. I mean, uh, our meetings are really planning sprints. Um, so I, I I mean, I, if your point is we need to be doing some work in advance of that, uh, yes, I, I, I agree, and we will be doing some drafting in the wiki. But does, does that um, answer your question, or am, am I misunderstanding your suggestion? No, that's exactly what I meant. Okay. Well done for interpreting me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and what I might do is, um, you know, if, if, if you're keen, if you feel that, uh, your own uh, academic board policies are, are, are useful and uh, you, know, you can share those links with me. Um, the OERU has some unique differences um, you know, to an in, a internal university. But I think it's important that we, you know, we get this right, um, uh, particularly around the area of you know, thinking about our program of study and how it relates to credentials with the understanding that we do not interfere with institutional autonomy in any way. Yeah. Any, uh, any other comments? Uh, any, anything we're missing? Um, Wayne, um I, I just come back to that point about establishing an OERU academic board. You know, I think that's um, uh, an item that should have a fair degree of prominence in the discussion because, um, I mean, uh, traditionally an academic board is the, is the driving force in institutions for approving and accrediting programs and endorsing um, the quality of programs and so on. So, you know, it, it, it's... You know, to my mind, establishing an OERU academic board as such is, um, in many respects, the first major step towards OERU becoming uh, a recognised uh, organisational structure that can do all the uh, formal processes uh, associated with um, uh, quality assurance and, and accreditation of programmes and courses and so on. Um, so I, I personally think there's a lot of scope in that topic and, and uh, certainly a need for extensive discussion. But if, if, uh, if, if, if this was to proceed and our collaborative institutions all got behind such a, such a board um, and such a structure, then um, in many respects, it may well end up being able to deal with a lot of the issues that individual institutions currently have to grapple with. Yeah. Here, here, um, I, 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 this is Ken, uh, and I, I'd like to follow up from David, because as David started talking about it, it seems as if it would be a natural hook uh, as well. That is, we could theoretically include in the um, sort of bylaws of the, of, our, of the USQ Academic Board or the Institutional Academic Board that the um, Chair of Academic Board needs to appoint somebody to um, sit on OERU Academic Board. So there's this, there's this inherent connection now uh, and a regular reporting. Because I mean, one of the things that I think we've experienced at USQ is that for very brief periods of time, OERU becomes a topic and then it becomes really quite quiet because it's not integrated into the, the regular sort of uh, workflow and structures, uh, governance structures within the university. And it would be a, uh, this would be a real opportunity, I think. Yeah. Th thanks for that, David and Ken. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I'm sensing from conversations as well, the you know, people have had offline as well. I think this is an important facet. <laughs> And typically, most academic boards aren't exposed to sort of the international nature of what we're doing to the extent that we're having to deal with it. 
So I, and I think it's, it's going to be a two-way conversation um, and, and mutually beneficial for the internal boards as, as, as well as the work that we are trying to achieve uh, through the OERU. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a strong sense that this is you know, an important item for discussion at the meeting. Yeah. So, Cindy, does it um, make sense from your perspective? Um, yeah, it does indeed. Um, I think that's exactly the way to go. I wanted to ask another question. Sure. If, when we're when we're done that that uh, that item though. Yep. Yeah. I'm hearing silence, so I'm. I'm, okay. I'm if you could go ahead with your question. Um, well, I'm thinking that this brainstorm list has some things that could be naturally grouped into some key, key categories, and I'm wondering about what your process is, um, Wayne, for deciding what the order is on the agenda and how those things get grouped together. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So uh, what I do is uh, the, the meeting website that, uh, that I showed you earlier on, right, uh, meetings, uh, dot OERU, uh, in, in good OERU tradition, we eat our own dog food. Um, and so the, the systems and processes we're using to uh, publish course websites, we actually use for publishing the meeting website. So what in fact actually happens is you'll see here at the bottom of every page, uh, you know, in this agenda, let's just say the confirmed participants. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, uh, you will see there's a content link. And that actually takes us to the page in the wiki. So all the authoring of everything we do for the meeting is actually done in the wiki. So anybody would be able to A, edit, but B, also comment by providing feedback on the discussion page. So to get back to your question about how we go about formu formulating this, uh, you know, I sit down and I go and have a, a good think about, you know, what are the groupings, what are the categories, and a, a thrash out an initial agenda. Um, so the kinds of things we also think think about are we try and tackle the most important topics early in the day, um, you know, because you know people are jet lagged and you know the, the thing that the things that need detailed attention we try and do early in the day. Uh, we also have a good look, you know, at the sequencing that it makes logical sense. Um, so here at the OER Foundation, we we take a first stab at doing a draft on the items that have been submitted out of this list. Uh, we'll let you know, and then you, you can say, hey, you know, that's a good agenda, or no, you, you reckon this needs to be adapted or, or refined. So that's basically how we move forward. Also at the meeting, um, there's also quite a bit of flexibility. So tip, what we would do is we would have a plenary session, which maybe looks at a grouping of stuff, right? Um, and then there would be, you know, three or four breakouts. And it, it might turn out that, you know, we suggest four breakouts and the meeting divides them. Has only got interest in working on three of those things? And, and, and that's fine. Um, and, and that's how we take the meeting forward. So there's, even, there's still quite a bit of flexibility in the meeting. And sometimes based on earlier discussions, it makes sense to have, you know, a, a, a working group that wasn't nominated. So it's, it's, it's a very agile approach, but um, so that, that's basically how we, we, we do it or how we've done it in the past. And of course, I'm, I'm open to any suggestions in terms of how we might do it better. Mark, you, you've been at a couple of these meetings. Um, you know, have, have they worked for you in the past? Oh, well, yes, yes. Of course, that's what I'm going to say now. But yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Um, uh, no, the flexibility of it uh, and it, or even though we've got a, a pretty set agenda, I, I think we've been pretty good about realizing when we needed to adjust and uh, focused on the strengths of the folks who have actually um, come to the meeting. So, so yeah. absolutely agree. Yeah. And Cindy, as I, I, I think I mentioned this earlier in our discussion uh, today, what we, you know, this is not a conference, right? It, it's really a, a planning sprint, I think is the best way to call it. And we actually do the draft planning uh, and, you know, we do it in the wiki with the understanding that, you know, after the meeting, it does need, you know, refinement and tweaking and perhaps further consultation, you know, depending on, you know, the, the items that uh, have been discussed. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great. Um, I, I just was wondering, is all because there are a lot of there are a lot of topics there. 
there's likely to be more, but there's certainly um, categories that I can see as well. Yeah. And, you know, if it needs to be, you know, the stuff that is perhaps easier to do offline, in other words, you know, that we really take advantage of the face-to-face -face meeting. Right. Um, we, we might actually shift off the agenda. Um, but it's really a question now of actually populating the meeting and the times and you know, seeing, seeing what we can realistically uh, manage. And that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a juggling act, but we, we do it openly and transparently. And of course, anybody that's keen on working with me and doing that, you're most welcome. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, any uh, other items? Questions? I'm taking silence to me in the scent. This is this is a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Uh, just in terms of the process here on out, um, I will post a recording of this meeting. I'll make it available to our colleagues in Europe and Africa. This is a bit of an ungodly time for them uh, to have attended live. Uh, I will then give them the opportunity once they've you know sort of scanned the, the, the brainstorm list and the main decisions of this meeting. Uh, if they would like to meet with me separately, if they've got any additional items. And then I, over the next couple of days, I will start working on uh, crafting the agenda. Um, this is one of the parts of the year where I do a bit of benevolent dictate, dictating. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I do is I shoulder tap people and I say, hey, will, will you be prepared to facilitate the feedback on that session? Or will you be able to you know, present? Because I know in you know, the different bits of work that people are doing within the network and the interesting things that different institutions are doing. It's actually good to get those, those inputs in sort of the plenary sessions. So I will be shoulder tapping a couple of folk. And um, if you have a passionate desire to, you know, to, to, to lead a, a session, please let me know. Wonderful. So if there are no additional comments, I'd really like to thank you for your time. And contributions, it uh, looks like we are sh sh shaping up to have a good agenda. I'm definitely looking um, forward to being more involved with everybody. So I look forward to meeting you all. Thanks, Me Stephanie. Too. Thanks, Me Stephanie. Too. Me too. Thanks, Wayne. Right. Thanks, Wayne. See Thanks, you all. Wayne. Enjoy the rest of your day or uh, your evening, We're depending on which parts of the world you're at. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Here we go. See you Bye. later. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Take care.